Hi, welcome to this first um, lesson for the semester. This is the time that I know is a little scary because you're in Photoshop for me, with me, for the first time. A lot of you have um, uh, a lot of practice and a lot of um, experience in Photoshop, but just bear with me and I will go as fast as I can. And remember that this is a tutorial movie, so you can stop it, you can pause it, and you can rewatch it at any time. I have your assignments in front of me, <clears throat> and um, I just wanted to highlight this web page assets assignment because that's the very first one. It's worth four points. And although these assignments are pretty much the way the semester is going to um, go, this movie poster assignment right here may change to a photo collage by the time we get there. Um, but um, right now we're going to do the web page assets and this is in the first day handout which is my syllabus so just please um, download that from canvas and you can um, have this in front of you um, and we'll go through this uh, on the on the first day of class both online and on ground um, we'll talk about it and I talk about it in my intro movie as well so let's begin the web page assets right away so I'm going to minimize this screen and I'm going to go right into the finished product. Now you don't have to do this entire finished product the way that I have it. I'm going to double click something and show you the way that you all you have to do is make your own portfolio, not with my name, but yours. And that we're going to be having the upper words that are going to say home about services work and contact. Then the words Sorio portfolio or your name portfolio, MACA 1320. And then these three buttons will be all work, Photoshop and Illustrator. And this is not an active web page. It's we're building the web page. Okay. Now what I want to do is to minimize this for a second and show you that I've gone to the nth degree or to the last part of the degree. And I've actually put this into a web page. It hasn't been uploaded to the internet yet, but it's an active web page. Look at how all of these rollovers work. This is what's called a normal state. This is a rollover state. Normal state is just when you don't see any things change and rollover is when you actually move your mouse over an item. Now this rollover for photography actually works and I have put into the first module for the web assets this photography JPEG for you. So you could, if you want to, go do the extra credit portion of this assignment you don't have to but and yours does not have to be filled with all these pictures but I wanted to show you that these don't link to anything because I haven't made them active yet but this one does look at how this one links to the actual first assignment past the web page assets which is the photography retouching assignment but I've even made this back button click back to this image so if you want to you can view the second or third movie that actually shows you how to go into Dreamweaver and to do this okay to actually make this happen some of you will want to some of you won't right now okay so I'm gonna minimize this on the screen and we're gonna start this project right away and I know that this is beginning Photoshop I I'm gonna try to repeat 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 myself all the time so I'm gonna um, open my page again and we're going to start this whole process all right this is the way yours needs to look and I want you to look over here in this layer palette if your layer palettes not showing you go to window layers and if you want to undock it from the thing that's docked on the right hand side just pull your tabs over um, but one of the very most important things I want you to do is to learn a couple of things about screen resolution or magnification and getting an image to work so you can zoom in zoom out okay so I'm gonna turn off all the elements here for right now and I'm just gonna leave this nice and blank I want you to see when I hit tab how it turns off all the palettes that's tabbing on and tabbing off what if I want to get rid of all the palettes but keep my tool palette and my upper options bar I'm gonna hold down shift tab or hold the shift key and then hit tab and it tabs on all the other palettes but leaves these upper two so right now I'm just gonna tab everything on and I want to show you something. If I hold down the space bar, I get a hand tool. Look at how I'm trying to move this around the screen, but it's not.
If I hit the F button, which is to change it from standard screen mode to full screen mode, this works. I can hold down the space bar to get the hand and click my mouse and move it around the screen. Now zooming is a very important thing in Photoshop. I'm going to show you a couple of ways that are really, there's many ways. You could use the zoom tool. You could go command or control plus or minus, which is kind of inefficient, or you can just hold the options for Mac or Alt for Windows for a PC and zoom your middle mouse button. And depends on where your cursor is, that's the area of the screen that'll get bigger or smaller. And that's how I'd like you to zoom, okay? So let's get right into this assignment. It says to open up a new page, and I want you to see how I didn't, I used little Macomb logos for my pattern, and I'm going to show you when I get there how I actually made the Macomb logo be a pattern for the background, but I'm going to turn that pattern off to show you that it was a layer that was filled with white, but then it was just a pattern. Now let's start with just a blank screen, okay? So I'm actually going to um, go to Command N, which is to make a new one, or go to File New. Um, to get the resolutions, I made a little file that I wanted you to see very quickly, and we're actually going with... Um, uh, an example. Here's the example I'll show you. So if I click this, you can see right here that we're going to use this upper example. There's a better picture of it down here. And I made a JPEG of it just so you can see it right here. But it's just got um, the home about our services, our work and contact, which I shortened to home about services, work and contact. And then instead of having these buttons here, I'm, I'm going to reopen this. I, I actually right hand clicked and I saved this image. Okay. And then I cropped it and I made it into Photoshop. So I'm going to close that template for now. Okay. And I'm going to close this because we don't need to see this one anymore. And I'm actually going to go bring my folder over here and show you that I actually made <clears throat> um, this one right here. Uh, oh, I have to cancel that. I'm sorry. Um, let me hit the F button and go back to this. And let me bring this back. Sorry. And let's now go to this template right here. And let me zoom in so I can show you. Now I'm going to hit the F button again because I want to expand this to full screen. And what I should do is hit Shift Tab so that I can get all those palettes to be gone. Now I'm going to zoom into this. So instead of saying all work web graphic and mobile, we're just going to say all work Photoshop and Illustrator. Okay, in, in case you are in the Illustrator class and you want to add to your portfolio, but we're obviously only going to make the Photoshop button be the one that we're working in. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to use these as our examples of our eight icons that are going to be for eight projects for this semester. We're going to use again home about services work and contact and that's what we're using. Okay, so let me minimize or get rid of that that screen right here. Let me hit the F button to go back to here so that I can show you how I actually um, um, have the screen resolution sizes. So let me click this and go right into the um, resolution sizes. If I typed in website dimensions, the most popular website dimensions, and you can see it's used 35% of the time right there around the world, is something that is near the one we're using. So this is 1366 by 768. We're going to make it 1200 by 600 just for our purposes for this class. So let me minimize the screen go into Photoshop and let's start a brand new project. So let's, let me hit the F button and let me hit the tab key so I can show you this is the finished one. If I have to refer to it, I'll put everything back on. So I'll just go back and forth to this, okay? Um, I like my two windows that are open. I have the info palette open, which is under window down to info. We're going to need it in a minute. And I have my layer palette and I have my tool palette over here, which you can show in a long format like this. If you click this upper right hand button or in a short, shorter, more stockier. And for me, I like it. It gets it out of the way a little bit better. Okay. But let's go to command N for file new. I've already set it to 1200 by 600 at 300 PPI. 
We're going to leave the background as white right now. And I'm just going to click OK and leave everything else alone. Now, I'm going to zoom in. Now, we should save the file right away and save it into our folder as our last name, Web Assets. So let's go to File, Save. Um, I haven't really done anything right now, so it doesn't want me to save it. But in two seconds it will, because I'm actually going to show you that I want to have you turn off this background, but I can't because it's locked. So the very first thing to do is to double click this background and let's actually make it a layer. Now I could type in right there and I'm going to call it background color. So now I've made it a layer. See how by me making it an actual layer, I'm actually going to now be able to go to file save, but it actually lets me turn it off for the checkerboard background, which is a transparent background. And we'll get into that a lot more in a few minutes, but um, let's go into um, saving the file. So I want you to save it into what I've made is, is a student demo folder for the web page assignments. And I'm going to name it my last name, underscore web page and um, assets. Now I'm going to put in there so I don't mix it up with something else. I'm going to actually put in here that it's my demo file. You wouldn't put that in there, but please. And notice whenever I put a space, I actually put an underscore. Okay. So um, I'm going to save it. Now let's go do the very first thing, which is to um, set our guides. So with this right here, let's set the guides down and I'm going to use my info palette and look at my X and Y. I want guides at 50 pixels. And if your rulers aren't showing up here, go command or control R under view rulers. There's command or control R and then right hand click inside and show it as pixels, not as anything else. Thank you. Now let's pull this down and let's put um, 50 pixels all the way around. Now I could just keep my eye open over here and try to get it on 50 pixels or look at the info palette and use it to be more exacting at 50 pixels. Now I'm going to put one at the bottom and if it's 600 then I'm looking for 550 pixels right there. Now I'm going to put 50 pixels on the left hand side which I'm getting close right now okay and then to 1150 pixels. So let's go a little bit more Mr. Soriel right there. Now I want another guide down at 125. So let's put a guide at 125 and then a guide in the center right there at 600 pixels. So let's get it close to 600. Boom. Now we've already done this. So let's command S or control S to save the file. Now the next thing is we are going to want to um, make a background color. So instead of white, let's fill this with something else. I want a very dark gray, which I'm going to change and change and change. Okay. Just so you can see how easy it is to do. So I'm going to click my foreground color right there. It's the first upper left icon. I'm going to make a gray and I'm going to not really care. I like it that it's a blue gray to fill with the foreground color. I could go to edit fill on this window, I could say foreground color, but that's a long way around. So what I have to do or what I could do if I command Z back is I could just go option or alt delete or for you would be alt backspace. Okay. And that fills with that color. Now watch if I go command delete, it's going to fill with what we refer to down here as the background color. It's the lower right hand one. So here is command or control backspace or command delete or option delete or alt backspace. So I want it to be the gray. I'm going to make a new layer. I'm going to hit command S to save, make a new layer and let's, um, I'm going to brighten up these guides now so that we can see them a little better. So I'm going to go to Photoshop preferences guides. And instead of having the guides be um, here, I'm going to have them be a little bit brighter so we can see them a little bit better on the screen. Thank you. Now we're going to make this one be our pattern. 
and you can use dots but I'm gonna use the Macomb logo okay I don't care if you use dots I'll put mine as dots first so I'm gonna go in here and hit the return key to accept the word pattern we're going to fill it with white for now it doesn't really matter what the color is what matters is that there is a color in there so I'm gonna go I clicked this foreground color I moved it up to the upper left now I'm gonna hit option or alt backspace or option delete and fill it with white now don't don't click this anywhere on the icon or on the name but double click outside of it and then click the pattern overlay don't just click the check mark actually click to this so that this changes now I'm not going to use the Macomb logo I'm going to use dots and I'm going to scale the dots up in size so I like my dots and I'm going to put the dots up here bigger like this that'd be fine and you'd be just perfectly fine using that and then I could lower the opacity on the dots and make them melt into the background as you can see what I just did okay I want to use the Macomb logo so I want you to see how I did that okay so in order to have the Macomb logo in there I'm hitting command s to save if you want to fast forward through the Macomb logo part go right ahead okay but I want you to see how to define a pattern how you can make anything you want in Photoshop it's so cool okay so I'm gonna hit the F key to change from um, stand from full screen mode one two times back to here so I can click to my um, there's several ways I could have done that but I just wanted you to see that I can keep on clicking the F button to get to those modes I'm gonna double click this and I already put in here a Macomb logo Google site so I'm gonna click it here is the Macomb logo that I used now what I did was I clicked this image I went to view image there and then I right hand clicked and I saved the image to my desktop now I'm gonna close that I took that image which is right here and I opened it in Photoshop so let's go right there <clears throat> I took that little image and I went command or control a to select all I then went to edit define pattern I let it stay with the name now I would click OK but I I already did so I did it uh, last night so I'm gonna hit cancel but pretend I hit OK now I'm gonna close this file now I'm going to go in and hit the F button to cascade this one use the space bar to move this over if I want to zoom in or zoom out I can use the option and my middle mouse button or alt and my middle mouse button I'm now going to move this over and I'm going to now double click this word pattern right here it'll take me right to that window that I can change it from the dots to my little logo which now shows up right here now all those are just a little too big so I'm gonna click away from it and I'm gonna make those a little smaller which is about where I went right about there okay maybe even a little smaller nope right about there and I'm gonna click OK now what I wanted to do was to take um, the transparency I had left at uh, the opacity up here I left at about 20% but I want to darken my background now so I'm gonna to click to the background layer I'm going to click to the color picker look at how I did that I just clicked to the foreground color I'm gonna click that gray that's right here then I'm gonna go a lot deeper gray than that and I'm gonna to stick to the blue side so they've got a little bit of blue in it and now I'm gonna fill this by going option delete and now I have a little bit darker field later on I'm gonna add and I'm gonna to go to my other file to show you what I did I'm gonna add a darker side to it so I like the feel that I had here okay and I'm gonna actually click it and you're gonna see that I have this on a 10 percent opacity so I actually even deepened it more than 20 percent so I'm gonna go back down to my one I'm working on with you I'm gonna to click to this and I'm gonna to go to 10% opacity and let's um, let's see the difference let's go back to my one that I had 
and I had them a little bit bigger, just a tiny bit bigger, and my background, look at how dark it is right here, I'm clicking on it. Let's go back to the other one and just look at it, and I'll make this just a little bit darker even. So I'm gonna click this foreground color, make it a little bit darker, let's click OK, now with me selected on the background layer, I can overfill or refill it up by going Option or um, Option Delete or Alt Backspace and make it a little darker. Now I'm going to double click the pattern overlay and I'm going to scale it up just a bit. And I want to make sure that I see this whole thing over here so I see the edges because I want that to be real clean real like nicely centered and that feels good right there so that's what I'm gonna do I'm gonna leave it right there and hit command s to save the file now we're gonna start on this white box so in order to make this white box up here I need a new layer I don't want to make it on um, the layers that I've already got on it so I click to the pattern overlay and I click to the new layer button all right that then it goes up above there now if I didn't do that and I was clicked on the background layer and made a new layer I could have just manually moved it up see how I did that now I'm gonna call this white title and I'm going to um, make the white title fit in this upper area right in here let's go see how I did on the last one so see how this white title goes right inside of here and then if I show you the guides here there is that 75 this is the 125 guide and this is the 50 guide right there okay so that's how that fit in there and I'm gonna go back to the one that I'm gonna do with you and now let's fill this let's make sure this guide is at 50 right here so I want to make sure it was at 50 it looked a little bit funny but that's fine now I'm gonna get and I need to tell this layer to only fill in a certain area so I want to make sure that snap is on which it is snap is on I'm gonna hit the M key for marquee or click up to this upper right hand little part right there and I'm gonna as best as I can start above the pasteboard and I'm gonna try to snap this right onto these guides now I'm gonna purposefully gonna miss this bottom one and say oh darn now let's zoom in and out and make sure we're right on the guide so in order to transform a selection because that's what that is let's go to um, select and transform selection then a transform box comes in now if I hold the option or alt key and I zoom into this look at how I can grab this and let it snap right into there now let's zoom out and then zoom over to the left hand side and you can see how I'm right on the left hand side if I wasn't I could let it snap in there now I'm gonna use the space bar and move it over to this side okay with the hand I'm gonna let go hold the option key and my middle mouse button and zoom in and you can see how I'm right on the money actually I wasn't look I was not now I'm gonna let that zoom right in to right um, it's not gonna click on that guide perfectly which is I'm fine that that's that close it's only one pixel away if I actually took off this is kinda weird I should show you because nothing's perfect all right if I were to turn off snap I could actually move this over and snap it if I get really close I could probably move this over and snap it right into that guide actually it's not letting me which is fine because it's on one side of the pixel or the other I'm okay with that but I want to turn snap back on because that's so close I'm so magnified so close so let's move it out now to accept the transformation hit the enter key or the return key now let's take this white title let's click once on the foreground color let's move this up in the corner and let's hit option or alt backspace and command D to deselect control D or command D to deselect the selection and hit command S to save
The very next thing we're going to do is we are going to type the word. Okay, I'm just looking. We're going to type the word um, Sorio Portfolio or your last name portfolio. And here's where you get to make a, um, a type selection. And I want to go to my next page to see what size I made this. So I'm going to, um, uh, we're just going to play the game of making it right. You know, this is where you would actually look at your template. Let me go to that template. So I'm going to click the, um, the, um, my finder, which brings up my folders over here, which I'm going to, um, bring up my web page. And I'm going to see that in here I used a particular typeface and if I take the T key and click inside of here I made this um, 14 points high okay so I'll try to go with 14 points high I should have written that down so let's go back to the one I was working on <clears throat> and now let's type anywhere don't drag a box let's just click now I'm gonna type in Sorio portfolio and then um, I am going to look at my um, my lettering and I'm going to judge my lettering before I put it anywhere on size look at how I'm holding the option key and I'm zooming in to place that in here now if I hit the space bar for the hand tool um, it's just going to add a space in there so I'm gonna double I'm gonna get rid of that and I'm actually gonna click up to this check mark or click to the move tool then it lets me hold this down so I can center this in there now I'm gonna move this layer palette over and I'm gonna go to window character and I'm going to bring my character palette over to the top here. Now I want you to see something very cool. I don't know what kind of, um, I don't know what, what uh, and I shouldn't have had this selected yet, these faux FAUX styles here. It's okay that I did, but um, what I want to do is just, I typed this in at a particular typeface. And I want to go see what typefaces I want. But before I do that, um, let me um, show you something about proper design. I took that out because I want to make sure that I have no extra spaces in here. Look at the spacing here. And um, I'm going to click the Move tool. And I'm actually going to show you that um, this is called range kerning right here and I'm actually going to take the overall tracking or kerning of this down to zero. Please watch what happens on these right here. I actually wanted to open up the space between each letter by a little bit so I put in 50 and now I have to judge what my letters are doing. Photoshop and any application don't kern letters that are awkwardly created correctly. So I'm going to take the T key before I go any further and I want you to be very aware of how bad a computer deals with text. Right here you see the U, the R, and the I um, are pretty darn even in their look of how far apart they are. But the S and the A could probably move a little closer together. So I'm going to click the cursor between the S and the A. If you're on a PC, hold down Alt. If you're on a Mac, hold down Option. And use your left or right arrows to close the space down between letters. Now that actually feels better. I'm going to put it between the O and the I, and I'm going to close the space down a little bit more. And I'm going to close the space down a little bit more here. Now watch how close the O and the P should move together so this reads correctly. Now the O and the R need to move a little closer. The O and the F are too far apart. The R and the T were fine. The L and the O are not good. And the O and the I are not good. Now, I have made this look a whole lot better and more consistent. 
I'm going to hold you to that. And you have to know that if you're in Photoshop, you're in a retouching, you're an illustrator, you're in video production, you're in animation, please be aware of how terrible computers handle text. It's up to you, the artist, to make it visually acceptable. Now, <clears throat> let me um, click this. Now, what I mean by that is if I were to click away from this and click back, and I don't have to actually... Um, highlight this to change the size. Watch how I could make this, if I drag across, I could make it 16 points. Look at how I could take it and I could make it 26 points. Look at how I could make it back to 14 points, which is what I'm going to leave it at. But I want it to be upper and lower case like this. So what I'm going to do is now take the move tool and I'm going to put this in here and I'm going to visually um, balance it in here. Okay. Now what I should do is see how wide this is and then divide by two. So what I'm going to do is move this all the way over to the edge right here. Now if I hold my cursor right here, you can see in this upper ruler, I'm doing it right for you. I'm on 400 pixels. That means this is 400 pixels wide. So if I were to place another guide 200 pixels over and 200 pixels over, then it would be visually and beautifully centered inside of there. So let me try to do it by eyeball right here. And now if I drag another guide and instead of putting it at 600, I go back to 500 and 400 and I'm right now at 400 right now. Look at how far off I was. Now I'm going to go from this one at 600 and go 700, 800. And now let me move this over like this and make sure I'm at 800 now. Now I'm going to use my cursor keys. As long as I'm selected on this, I could use the right hand cursor key and center that nicely in there. And there is where that lettering is nicely centered. Now to turn your guides off and on visually, I'm going to move this down because I need it in a little bit because I want you to see something else. In order, I want you to see a kind of a neat way to um, experiment with the typefaces. Okay, but I'm going to leave mine on trade winds, but I'm going to show you something. Um, to turn your guides off and on is command or control semicolon. Now look at how nicely you can semicolon them on or off. To show you where that was, it was under here. It was under show guides, which is command semicolon okay right there so please um, make a point of that and say it a few times to yourself command semicolon command semicolon now if I have the lettering layer selected and I click inside of this and leave it selected and if I use my down arrows look at how I could um, navigate or scroll through all of the lettering typefaces and I can get a really good feel of how some of them would look as opposed to others. Now you can choose whatever one you want. That's fine with me. That's kind of interesting. Um, that would be a little too much. But I'm going to go back to ATC Tradewinds because that's what I wanted to use in the first place. Which was back to about right there. So I'm going to leave that like that. But I wanted you to see it again. If you actually leave it selected, that's my dog barking. If you leave this layer selected like this and just highlight in the character palette, you can use your upper or your um, up arrow or your down arrow to navigate through that. And it's really a nice way to navigate through typefaces. So I'm going to hit Command S to save the file. And now we are going to. Um, not lose track of what page we're on, Mr. Sorio. So let's go to um, center the title in there. I Yes, I like that. Now we're going to go to um, all work, and we're going to go to the lowercase one, and we're going to do it over here. So I'm going to um, click away from everything, 
everything in the layer palette. I'm going to take this and I'm going to um, hit the T key. I'm sorry. I need to hit the T key and I'm going to click anywhere I want and I'm going to type in um, all work. Now, I don't want it to be, whoops, I didn't have to do that. I don't want it to be in the faux style. I just want it to be in regular. So I'm going to click it to just be regular. And I'm saying that it needs to be four points. So let's go to four points. I could either drag, look at how I can put my cursor right over in the character palette. I can drag to four points like this. I can magnify across or I could use this drop down menu to find it. So there's many ways you can actually change the point size. These are actually scalable or movable. Everything in Photoshop you can pretty much just drag across if you want to use your own slider bar. So I'm going to hit Command S to save the file. Now I don't mind this gray and I'm going to leave it at that gray. Now you can choose any color you want to. For your lettering okay I don't care now let's just move this up you have to be in the move tool to move that so you have to click the move tool first and then move this now I want that on the same baseline as what this is so I'm gonna drag I'm, I'm scrolling in and I'm gonna place a guide right at the baseline of this and let it snap in right there now I'm gonna move this over and I want to take this and have this snap right into there. So now I'm making sure that's on the right baseline. Okay. Now all work is going to turn into um, Photoshop and Illustrator and there is many ways to actually do this. To make this all work actually copy and paste for the next ones there's a few ways to do it. The long way is I could take it and drag it to the new layer icon. Now I have two of them and I could hold the sh grab it and hold the shift key and move it over like that. Now I have two of them. But if I command or control Z back and then option command or control Z back or alt command or control Z back, I can go back in history. Look at how there's two layers of it. Now I only have one. The proper way or the quick way to duplicate something in Photoshop is to be in the move tool. There's actually two ways to do it. It's this, well, let me just finish. It's to be in the move tool to hold the alt or option key. You get a double headed arrow then to hold the shift key and then drag. So I'm constraining it with the shift key along the horizontal. See how nice that is? If I didn't have the shift key, then I could just move it anywhere. But I'm going to um, command Z back and I'm going to do it again. I'm in the move tool and I'm holding alt or option. I then click on the item and then I hold the shift key and drag over. Okay. Now, if I was in any other tool, this is going to confuse some of you. If I was in any other tool, let me command Z back. I could be in the, um, in the paintbrush and I could be painting. And if I want to duplicate something, if I hold control alt or command option, I get the same um, double headed arrow. But that's adding the command or control key because that always gets you back to a move tool selection. Then you add the shift key and I can drag this over. So it's the same thing, but I'm going to stay in the move tool and now I'm going to make a third one. So on the, this one, I'm going to hold option or alt, then grab it with my mouse, then hold the shift key and make a third one. Now I'm going to take the T key and I'm going to type this one as Photoshop. Then I'm going to click this check mark up here because I can't just hold the space bar down or I can't click over to this one. I have to deselect from this one. Now there's a couple of ways to deselect. You can click the check mark. You can go over to the um, tool palette and click the move tool or you can click up to the next layer and it does the same thing. So if I'm in the next layer, I triple click there or I could have triple clicked on the T. Watch this. If I triple click or double click on that, it's a double click actually. I could type in the word Illustrator. You don't necessarily have to do it over here. Now, 
I want to center these. They actually turned out pretty good. But I want the word illustrator to line up with the edge. Let's see what I did on the other one. So let's go to the other one and let's zoom out and let me move it over with my space bar and see how I have Illustrator and that lining up. And if I hit Command semicolon, you can see how that looks over here. But I'll put Command semicolon back on. Okay, then I'm gonna go to the other one. Um, there is a trick so that I don't always have to go down here to toggle between two files. And I don't know if this is gonna overwhelm you. But above the tab key, would you look at your keyboard, is a tilde key. It's called the tilde key. If I go Command or Control tilde, I can toggle between two files, or three or four or five that you have open, that are on full screen mode. Was that too much to tell you? It's Command tilde. So I'm going to leave it like that. Now I'm going to click on the word Illustrator. Look at how they updated their names in the layer palette. Okay. And I'm going to use the space, I'm sorry, I'm going to use the right hand cursor to cursor that over if I'm in the move tool. Now there's a neat thing about the move tool. So I'm going to hit the V key for the move tool. If I right hand click with the move tool, it takes me or tells me what layer the item that I want is on. Look at how this is the Photoshop one. Look at how this is the all work one. Look at how this is the Sorial portfolio. Look at how this is the white title. So I can right hand click in the move tool and it takes me right to where I want. And now I can move this one over and visually center that nicely. Now this is what is going to be the normal states of these. We need these three things to turn into white and to rename them for the rollover states. Let me hit Command S to save the file. What I'm going to do is click and hold the Command or Control key and click and click so all three are selected. I like to do things at one time. So watch how I'm going to change these into white lettering at one time but it's gonna take a little bit of um, some energy. So I'm gonna move the layer palette and make it longer. I'm gonna drag all three to the new layer icon. Now I've made copies of them. I'm gonna deselect and I'm gonna put all work above the copy above all work. I'm gonna put Photoshop copy above it. So I have them in the right order now. I'm gonna double click the name copy and I'm gonna type in RO for rollover. I'm going to double click the name copy and I'm going to type in RO for the Photoshop rollover and I'm going to double click the name copy on all work and type in RO for the rollover state. Now watch how neat this is. If I take this one, hold command or control and click on this one and click on the Illustrator rollover. I have all three rollovers selected, even though they're separated by other files in the layer palette. Now, all I have to do is click on this gray, move it up for the white and click, and all three have turned into white at one time. So you could have done it with one, two, 10, 12, 100, five million. Although I think that was a little exaggeration. Let me hit Command S to save the file. Now what we want to do is to turn these rollovers off for the moment. But since we're going to work on the Photoshop one, um, I can't think of the word. We're, the, we're in the Photoshop class, so let's leave the Photoshop one on and hit Command S to save the file again. Always save your file. Now I'm going to go Command tilde, which is the command or control key and the key above the tab key to see these. Now, let me read my little notes here. Okay, um, it's time to um, start with making these side buttons all in one folder. See how I have all of these side buttons on my other file in one folder? So I'm going to go command tilde back to this. Let me move this over. And if I select the bottom one, and now this time hold the shift key and select the top one, I want to group these. Now there's a fast way to group them. 
there's always a faster way in Photoshop. But if I go over to here to say new group from layers, that's kind of a, I, why should I have to go all the way up there to do that? Okay, what I'm going to do is just click the folder. With these selected, I'm going to go down in the layer palette and click the folder. Double click it and I'm going to name it side buttons. Hit the return key and hit the space bar and now I have those all um, really nicely done. Okay, so let's now click away from that. Now let's type in the first one um, for um let me see what i'm doing okay so now a line again okay, new text on way all right this is good lower pattern dot okay all right um i want to create the home about services work and contact i was just reading my notes i'm sorry so now i'm going to hit the t key somewhere anywhere i'm going to type in and i want to hit command tilde to show you what i've done there I have made, whoops, I hit the tab, sorry. Let me hit Command tilde. I've made the gray ones be the normal states and the black ones be the over states or the roll over states. So first let's make the gray ones and then we can quickly turn them into the black ones. So all we have to do in uppercase, let me click on this and see that that is at four points and it's ATC, so we're, we're fine. So let me um, click away from that and command tilde myself back. Let's take the T key and let's click up here and type in home in uppercase. Now let's um, click it just like this. See how it says home over here in the layer palette. With it selected, let's make it be a gray. Let's make it be a nice blue gray because I or whatever color you want actually I don't you don't have to make it my color please that's not why we're doing this just just that's too dark still let me go lighter there that looks better so the black will show up very nicely now let's not try to center these yet so how do you duplicate home into the next one you're in the move tool you hold the option or alt key then you grab it with the mouse then you hold the shift key and slide it over. Now, let's do all of them. So let's repeat the process, let go of everything. Put your finger on the option or alt key, click your mouse, hold your shift key and make the third one, let go. Option or alt, click, shift key add, drag, let go. Option or alt, click with your mouse, shift key add and drag to the right. Now let's double click, let's hit the T key, T key, T key, T key, and on this one, let's type about. So I'm hitting caps lock. Now I'm gonna click on this one, but I need to click over to it. So look at how I'm going to click the check mark. Now I can click in home, and on this one, I can type in services. Click the check mark. Now on this one, I can make this one say work. With caps lock on, it does a very good job. Click the check mark. Now click inside this one. And now let's type in contact. Now let's take away the caps lock button. Let's click the check mark and save the file. Now let's add some space between these. So let's just visually make it pretty so i click the move tool click contact and let's now move it over so it's nicely aligned over here let's take work look at how i'm going to do it i'm in the move tool i right hand click and go to work could i have clicked right there yes but why don't you get used to the right way to do things or no 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 i'm sorry i said that the more efficient way to do things. Now I'm just using my arrow keys. So how do you do this? Right hand click over services, it takes you to services, and I'm gonna move this over, and now that feels really nice. I almost have it just beautiful. I think a, a boot, <laughs> I'm a Canadian, a boot has to move over. So let's go to about, let's move this over, and now that feels pretty good, doesn't it? Now let's just put the dashes between each one, okay? so. Let me click the text tool, which is the T key. Thank you. Let's just click and make a dash. 
Now in the dash, let's make it a little bit bigger. So look at how this is now a dash right there. Let's make it be five points. So let's go to five points. I'm gonna take the move tool and I'm gonna move the dash up. I'm gonna get close to it, draw another guide down so it's on the baseline, just about on the baseline. Let me now grab that guide and put it right on the baseline. And now I can look and see where my guide is. I like where I just put that actually, okay? That's fine. Now, how do you make one turn into several? What tool do you have to be in? You're right, it's the V key for the move tool. Now, I click over top of it. I hold the, I'm sorry, I hold the option key. I click over top of it. I add the shift key and I have this one. Now, I'm doing the same thing. Let go. Option, click, or Alt, then add the Shift key, and it becomes this one. Now, let's do the same thing. That one has to move just slightly over. Let me move it slightly over. Okay, now Option, click, move over, and I have it right there, and Command S to save the file. Okay, so now um, I should be back recording. I just pause it for a second. I actually want to see if I'm um, going to do that right. So I'm clicking to my I show you window and I want to go here and I want to say that this is now, um, yeah, I'm good. So let me go back. Okay, so um, in order to now turn home about services work and contact in um, to black, as our rollovers, let's do the same thing, okay? So I actually wanna, in the layer palette, look at how all of those are kind of all over the place here, okay? Um, I wanna see what I named those in my other file. I named those title buttons, okay? Title bar buttons, that's good. So let's go to Command tilde, or Control tilde, and let me move this back, or up a little bit with the space bar. And now I want to take all of these and I'm going to put about and home. So I'm holding the control or command key. I'm going to move them up above the dashes so they're all in about the right place and the dashes are down here. Then I'm going to click and shift click all of these things that are the upper title buttons. Okay, the um, title bar buttons. And I'm going to click the folder. Now I'm gonna double click it and I'm gonna say that these are the title bar buttons. So they're all the elements that make up the title bar. And what I should do is I should put this little white title thing inside the title bar button folder. But watch how when I put it in there, I'm gonna zoom out a little bit, it's going to, um, Go to the top of the stacking order, and I want you to see that. So I'm gonna pick it up and drop it right in that folder. Now I have to open that folder and move that down below all the elements, but keep it in the folder. So you see how I did that, right? Now let me um, close the little toggle switch for the title buttons and then reopen it. Now, <clears throat> if I, click the contact button and shift click the home button, I can make copies of them. So I drag all five to the new layer icon, which is what I want you to do. Then I want you to click away from it. Let's put the home copy above home. Let's put about copy above about. Let's put services copy above services and let's put work copy above here and then contact us in the right place. Let's double click it and double click copy and say roll over. I'm even gonna drag the RO up here and hit command C. Then I'm gonna double click the copy for work and hit command V or control V. Click on services copy, double click and then double click again on copy and hit command or control V click about copy, double click the title, double click the word, command or control V, click, double click, 
double click again and command V and now they're all named correctly now let's click to contact don't hold the shift key but hold the command or control key on a Mac command on a PC control and let's go click contact work rollover services rollover about rollover and home rollover and then at one time at one time let's click the color pick in the character palette and click all the way grab that circle and go all the way down to the lower right hand way into the corner boom and now they're all black now we can turn off the rollovers like this and then we can leave just for the heck of it leave the rollover for home on just so I see that you have it on okay and let me hit command s to save the file now we're gonna start on the circles and we're this is gonna happen awfully fast okay we really just have to make the one circle so I need my info palette and let's just visually place the circle over here in the corner oh um, we're gonna add um, into the same folder I forgot to add MACA over here so I'm gonna take um, MACA 1320 and I'm gonna put it on the baseline over here and I'm gonna um, leave the title bar button layer um, folder selected I'm gonna leave it selected and click anywhere and I'm gonna type in M-A-C-A -A space 1320. And I'm going to um, use the move tool and move it up above here. I don't want it in black, I want it in that gray. So what I wanna do is to first put it way over here so I can show you a kind of a neat trick, okay? So I'm gonna move it over. I want it in the same color as this. So here it is. Here's the black, look at what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna click this color picker and move it over. Now Photoshop gives you an eyedropper when you move your cursor out of this color picker window. And if I move it over this and grab the same gray, then that turned into the same gray. See how, see how neat that was? Let me click okay. Now let's make that a little bit bigger up to about five points. And let's move it over in the corner and let's hit the V key, which it already is. And let's just now hold the shift key and move it over. And then I'll move it down slightly like this. Let me hit command S to save. And now I can close the title bar. Look at how the title bar has all the elements that are in the folder up there. And now let's click away from everything. We are going to make a new folder, I'm sorry, a new layer for the, um, for the actual buttons. I named it, let me hit Command tilde to see what I named it. I made it portfolio. So let's go back. So now all I have to do is hit the M for marquee, but I have to change it to a circle. Now, if I drag from the top down, you can see how I'm getting um, any kind of oval or circle I want. If I hold the Option key, I can actually drag from um, the center out, which is neat. So I'm going to deselect and start it over. I'm going to go um, hold the Option key and drag from the center out, and then hold the Shift key to constrain it into a perfect circle. Now I'm going to make it at 150 pixels wide. So if you look at the info palette right now, I have it about 150, can, it's 149 or 151, which is just fine with me. Now, um, we are going to just fill that. So I need a new layer with nothing on it, and I'm going to fill it with, um, let me see what I want to fill it with. Um, do you know that I for actually forgot? Let me go back to here. Let me go back to my portfolio. Uh, don't get all freaked out with what I have. I'm going to fill it with a um, with a gray, with an inner glow. So let's go. That's right. Okay. So I go back to here. I'm going to fill it with a gray. So let's go just make a nice gray, like a blued off gray, right about there. That's perfect. And I'm going to go Option Delete. 
Now I'm going to command D to deselect or go to select and deselect, which is command or control D. Hit the V key and I'm going to move it up into this corner right about here. Okay, now all we have to do is add the elements that we need to it and then keep on duplicating for all of the elements as we move across. So this one is gonna have a title on top of it. So let's have this one say photography. So this is gonna say photography. And now we are going to um, add an, uh, an inner glow to it, all right? And I'm gonna double click out here. I'm gonna click the inner glow element right there and I made my inner glow with a screen mode we'll get into more screen modes or modes of what things are screen needs to this area and screen means to lighten this area here in multiply and color burn and everything that means to darken but we're going to leave it on screen mode right now and I have it on um, white um, and I you can see how I can um, move in um, the size, look at how I can make it bigger or smaller, right about there, which is fine with me. I, I like what, what, what that's doing. And now I'm ready to actually go use that as the means of, um, and I want to um, show you what I did on the other one. So let me go command tilde. So let me move this over. If I go down to the bottom, look at how I can turn that off and look at how I actually used a, a, a means of what Photoshop calls clipping. If I, if I hold the Alt or Option key and I unclip that element, you can see this is just a picture right here above that circle. Now, if I hold the Alt or Option key between those two layers, between the picture and the gray circle, I clip the picture to the edge pixels of the lower layer, which is with just a circle, no big deal, okay? And it uses the inner glow as part of the element, as part of my rollover element. So what I'm gonna do there is I'm also gonna add a drop shadow in a few minutes uh, when I actually do the overall file, I'm going to add a drop shadow to that. And I actually should have had a drop shadow there. I'm not going to show you what I'm doing yet. Um, but the drop shadow should have been there. So I just kind of made it there. Okay. So um, I'm going to go back and do the whole thing on this one. So now <clears throat> I don't have a picture there yet. And we're going to duplicate all of these and then rename them. But I need the text. So I'm going to type anywhere I want photography. Now I'm going to leave it as gray and I, oops, I didn't want to hit the return key. I am so sorry. I'm going to hit the, um, the move tool and I'm going to move this underneath here and I'm going to have that be just a little bit brighter. Okay. So I'm going to click photography and make it just a little bit brighter and I can move this over and you can see I can make it too bright. I actually want it to be the rollover when it rolls over. I do want it to be, um, um, I want that lettering to turn white, but I like what it's doing right there. Now, um, what I want to do is to um, hit the V key and I'm going to move the word photography up in the circle so I can have it nicely centered. And I'm pretty good right there. You can barely see it. I could make it a different color, but I'm going to center it and then move it back down underneath and use my cursor keys to put it over here. Now, what I want to do is copy all that to make one circle makes two, two makes four, and four makes eight. Okay, so that's pretty easy. Now, what I would like to do is to keep these all together. Okay, so I'm going to click on both of these. With both of these selected, go to the Move tool. Okay, hold the Option key, then hold the Shift key. It's, um, I'll say it again. Um, hold the Option key down click on the element, hold the shift key, and it becomes the next one, which is right about here. Now, you can move these over later. Now, look at how they've become the copies. Now, we're going to rename these, and this goes, um, it goes 
photography, image manipulation, 3D textures, character, organic drawing, hard surface drawing, movie poster, and tear sheet. Now I'm not going to type, I'll do the first one and then I'm going to pause the screen and show you when I come back that I'll have all of them typed. So let me go command tilde back to this one. So I'm going to take this now and um, I'm going to, um, uh, I probably, sh no, I'm actually glad. I'm going to actually at one time like we did before, we're going to turn all the words um the above words into the white words okay so the gray is going to be the the normal state white is going to be the over state but let's now take all four of these layers so let's click the first one and shift click these in the move tool let's hold the option key and let's now take these four and i forget where i went did i go sideways or did i go down I don't remember. I think I'm going to go down. So now these become these. And now that looks pretty good. Okay. Now let's take all four of these. I'm actually going to close the, look at how I'm closing the, um, the, um, the extra effects windows. So I can just shift click all of this. Now I've got all of these four selected. If I grab any one of them, Option key or Alt key, click the mouse, hold the Shift key and move them over. I now have all of the ones that I need here and that looks really good. That looks really nice. Let me move them over a little bit more. And now I think that's pretty good. Now I'm gonna do the first one and then I'll come back and show you what I'm doing. Okay, so let me hit Command S to save the file. Now I have a whole bunch of layers here. So let me make sure what one this one is. So in the move tool, let's right hand click over this one. It is indeed the second one up. So this should be the second one. So if I double click this, I can type in image manipulation. Hit the re don't hit the return key, Brian. And let's now hit the check mark box. Now this one better be the next one up, which it isn't. So I need this one and this one right here. I need them to be the third one. So let me turn, just so I get my head together, let me turn these two off. Let me turn these two off. This one here is definitely not the third one in the row. I need that one. This next one has to say 3D textures. So I want wherever this one is and wherever the word is for it, which is right there, I want those to go down to here. Now I have those as the third one. So I can click away, double click this one, and this one becomes 3D textures. And I have that done correctly. I should put a space right there and I've got that one done correctly. Now I'll do one more for you. Let me hit the check mark. Let me turn off 3D textures. Now, um, this one shouldn't say photography anymore. It should say 3D texture. So I'm gonna double click this and hit Command C. Double click this and hit Command V. I'm gonna double click this and hit Command C on image manipulation. Double click this and hit Command V. So now it goes photography, photography, image manipulation, image manipulation, 3D texture, 3D texture, and so on and so on. The next one should be character. So I'm gonna click to the next one. Let's turn off these two. Now let's right hand click over this one and see that these two are right here and here. So I need these two to go down to here. So just take your time and get it correct, okay? So double click this, Mr. Shoriel, and this one becomes character. Now, character is spelled correctly. Yes, it is. If I click away, I can double click this, Command C, double click this, Command V, and I have character done. Now I need the ones, the next ones have to be those two. Those two are actually in the right order. So I'm pausing it and I'll come back in a minute. Okay, I have all of the um, layers in so far and I don't have any of the rollover states. So what I need to do 
is to um, make a white photography, a white image manipulation, and all the way down to a white tear sheet. Look at how I held the command or control key to select every other layer. Now this is going to get a little overwhelming again, okay? but it's going to make all of these copies above there when I drag it to the new layer icon. Just try to stay focused. okay? While they're still here, I'm going to use them at the same time I don't necessarily have to move them down because they are the upper ones, but I'm going to put the word rollover right here and I'm going to um, drag across the RO and I'm going to make it very well organized. So look at how I'm going to double click this and double click it again and hit command V because I just copied it from the other one and I can do it very quickly. So I'll look at how I'm just moving up and I'm double clicking twice to get not only to the whole sentence but to the word and I'm hitting command V as I go. Now I'm hitting command S to save the file. Now if I click the first one and shift click the last one and click to this I can make them all go to white boom at one time. Did you see how that happened? See how neat that was? Let me hit command S to save the file. Now we could leave them here or put them where they should be because I want to show you where what else I want to do. Okay so I'm going to move tear sheet. I'm going to move them um, this one down to the um, um, tear sheet I actually made too many. <laughs> I made this one into this one should not be white <laughs> because right now I have two white tear sheets. I'm sorry, I just realized that. So I'm going to double click this one and um, actually I'm going to just click it. I'm turning off the top tear sheet and the bottom one. Oh, boy, did I make a mountain out of a molehill there. Um, I want to make it back into the right color. So I'm going to use movie poster to turn that one back. Oh my goodness, I am so sorry. But I'm turning off movie poster because that's the color I want this tear sheet to go if you know what I did wrong. So I have the layer selected. I'm clicking the color picker and I'm going to put this right over that. And now I have that tear sheet back in the same color as the ones that should be. I'm turning these eyeballs on and the white is above there. So do you see, you know, Photoshop is nothing but getting over um, accidents that happen or mistakes that happen. And you can see what I just did. And it was an easy mistake to make. So I'm going to take photography right here, scroll up on this palette, and I'm going to put photography above the photography word here. So now I take image manipulation, I put it above image manipulation, and so on, 3D textures above 3D textures, um, organic, I'm sorry, um, character above character, so it always goes normal state, rollover state, organic object above here, movie poster above here, and hard surface product, I didn't do that one yet, above here. So now everything is in the right order. Now it's so hard to figure out which one is which one. So I'm going to make it easy on myself. I'm going to click photography and shift click these for photography. These are all going to end up in one folder. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to label them with a color. So watch how I right hand click and I'm going to make this one red. I'm going to take this one and make it um, these three right hand click and label them blue just so I can see where they are. I'm going to do that all the way up to the top just so I change the colors. I'm going to make these three green. doesn't matter what color I make them. What matters is I'll then have more sanity when I'm over. These three I'll make something like purple. That'll be wonderful. And then these three here I could use red again if I wanted or I'll go to orange. And then these three here for movie poster, I'll make um, yellow. And these three I'll make into something I have no idea what. I'll make them back into red. So now I have these all organized into correct buttons. Now, if I click and shift click on all of them and grab every single one with them selected, I'm going to make a folder, a group folder, right there and name it portfolio 
and I have now a portfolio and it now works to go like this. So now I want to just simply add a drop shadow behind all of these. So here's how I want to do it this way for you. And then we're almost done. All we need to do is make a picture, bring a picture, put it over this one and clip it. That's all we have to do. So to this photography thing right here, I'm going to double click. I'm going to click to the drop shadow and you can see now how I've added a drop shadow. I want to move in closer to this one so you see that I want the drop shadow to go off to the right hand side a little bit more like that and then let's just um, not have it be so <clears throat> feathered that's what size means and then I'm gonna I can distance that out farther see that's way too far and that's not far enough so let's have it come where it makes an impact right there and I like the words being higher than the um, than the picture because the words don't want to have shadowing on them okay now how do you get this this drop shadow I have to open up all of these now so here's where I have to open up all the effects on all of the elements because I have to drag one drop shadow to all of them I don't have to redo the drop shadow on every single one I can copy it very simply and here's how you copy in Photoshop and just keep your eye on the drop shadow actually moving to each one of these so if I grab the drop shadow down here right here and I hold my finger on alt or option and I drag it above this one right there um, let me do it again okay so I'm gonna hold alt or option and drag the drop shadow on top of this now both of them have a drop shadow see now I let go now I hold Alt or Option and I drag the drop shadow above 3D textures and drop it. Now I have three drop shadows. So I'm going to grab the word, first hold Option, and put it above character. Now I'm going to do the same thing, make sure that I have not lost it from any of them. Hold Option, grab drop shadow, and put it above organic. Now go back to organic keeps on moving up and down and grab drop shadow and put it on hard surface product go to hard surface product grab drop shadow for movie poster only one more to go drop shadow on top of um, oh okay I've got to go to tear sheet uh, way up there okay and now I have drop shadows on every single one command s to save the file now I placed into your folder, I'm going to show it right here, I placed into your module a photography JPEG. I want you to download it, so all you have to do is just click on it in the Canvas module, just go ahead and click on it, and um, it'll come to your desktop. Double click it then and open it up. Now watch how I can take this file right here, and I'm going to duplicate this file. So I take it, I right hand click right over here, and I duplicate the layer. I change the destination of where I want it duplicated to the one that I'm doing for you right here in this list. I click OK. Now I can close that file, I'm done with it, and it now appears right here. Now I want it to actually come above this photography button, and then all I have to do is shrink it. So, find where the picture is in the layer palette. Look what I'm going to do. And now it is actually right above the photography one. If it wasn't, look at how if it wasn't, you would just put it right above the photography one. Now we're going to call it photography pick or whatever you want to name it. But photography pick is fine. I'm going to take the V key and we're going to move it over. Now I'm going to lower or lessen the opacity for a minute. So I'm going to take the opacity so I can see through it. So I can see where the button is and I'm going to zoom in. Now let me put this on the other screen because I don't need this right now. With this layer selected I'm going to hit Control or Command T to transform that picture. I'm going to hold the shift key and I'm going to drag this smaller 
Don't let go of the shift key. Let go of your mouse first, then the shift key. So you don't ruin the proportion. Now, just so you can see the, the circle underneath, I have a little bit more area there and a little bit more area there. So if I hit the return key, I now have most of the picture or the picture covering the circle and I like where I've cropped it. So I turn the opacity back up all the way I hold the Option key on a Mac or the Alt key on a PC between the two layers and I clip the edge of the picture to the circle. And that, if I hit Command S, is how I want you to save the file. Now all you have to do is save your PSD file. Go into Canvas, I don't have it opened yet. Go into Canvas and for the web asset project, there's a drop box in Canvas. All you have to do is go in and submit it. Now, um, I might have a, another small movie right in the same module that is called um, Tutorial for Submitting the File. But all you have to do is go into the module in Canvas and locate the web asset assignment and just submit it right there to me okay that's it i hope you've enjoyed this lesson now i'm going to have further movies of this that show you how to use um, um dreamweaver to make all of this work okay thank you